I'm Hayley and I've got a son with disabilities. I'm Joe's carer as well as his mum. Joseph is 17 now and he's been in the QE for four months. He's had a liver transplant and um, surgery on Christmas night um, on his small bowel. He's been very, very poorly. He was born a, small, a poorly child at birth um, and we had Joseph in our local hospital in Shrewsbury and we were transferred over to the children's hospital um, three weeks after he was born. So we've been back and forth from Mid Wales. We live in Mid Wales, a small town called Welshpool, very rural, but a beautiful place uh, to live in the country. But we don't have um, the specialised care that we need for Joseph. So we've always needed to travel um, and we've thankfully had um, places to stay, you know, with the hospitals of excellence. Edwards Trust and, and different um, and now we're staying at Bottle Cottage um, with the Birmingham Hospitals Trust. It's been a bit of a lifesaver really for us. Like I said it's been four months Joseph's been here. He's got uh, three siblings um, he hasn't been able to see um, under normal circumstances. You know the children would, they're all grown up now um, and have their own children. Uh, we have got six grandchildren but I think being siblings of a chronically ill child, um, Joe will never get better fully. He will always need um, medical care. So it's a life journey for Joseph, Joseph and us. So we're, you know, we're making memories, um, and that has to be even when we're in hospital because we spend a huge part of our time in hospital. So you know, this coming over from the hospital to the little cottage. It's like home from home from us. It it promotes our well-being, um, and for Joseph, he feels safe, and it, that's huge for Joseph because Joseph also has autism and a learning disability. And due to all the intervention, he's had a medical intervention he's had to have during his childhood. He's ended up with mental health PTSD. So our journey here in the QE. Um, it was quite fraught by the time we got here. Um, you know, Joe was critically ill um, and, wa and wasn't able to travel back to Wales anyway. Um, he was so ill, waiting the two months for the, for the transplant. Um, me and Dad, we were at his bedside every 48 hours, changing over and travelling back to Wales um, of that distance, 120 miles here, which, again, you know, it's not about money, it's not about finance, but when, you know, we've had Joe all our lives and we've tried to give him the best we can, we've had to reduce our hours with working, being carers. Um, we remortgaged six years ago, you know, we were about seven and a half, eight thousand miles back and forth that year. Um, you know, it was, it was, it was crippling that, that we did actually lose Joseph's mental health. Um, we were very grateful for he had a kidney transplant, he, um, he had his dad's kidney um, and um, you know Joe just didn't really regain health and certainly not his mental health. I feel that's where the charities, the hospital trust charity and the likes of uh, Bottle Cottage, they, they enhance our lives at a very traumatic time. You know just to come over here it's you know just literally five seconds away. Um, I can see it, I feel safe, he's there and Dad's there and we just swap over every 24 hours. Russ will come over here, have a good night's sleep and, and I'll do the same, you know, whether it needs to be to have a cry, to have a glass of wine. I do like a nice glass of wine, it keeps me sane sometimes. Just to turn that telly on and to float away 
even things down to the internet. You know, Joseph is a gamer. He had all his gaming stuff on the ward before transplant, but because of his frame of mind after transplant, he was very confused. Um, so we set it all up here. So it's, you know, given him that um, mindset of, you know, getting up and going, mm -hmm. coming over to see where mum and dad are staying. Um, can I please come over, mum? Of course you can when you're well enough. So that's all set for him. Uh, the table and everything was here, the internet. So he sits in his chair by the window and he has his game in his PlayStation in front of him and all his comfort, his blankets, we've been able to make it home from home really. Um, that in itself makes me and Russ feel really happy, you know, to give him that little bit of release from the hospital. Um, you know, when I can FaceTime my family, probably if it wasn't COVID times, my family would have been able to come down and, and join us. Um, but because of COVID, obviously that hasn't been able to happen. So we have felt very alone. I mean, but for the trust, being able to chat to you and your colleagues, um, supporting us through this time. My husband cooked me a nice Christmas meal on Boxing Day. Um, so that was lovely, you know, we've got all the amenities here. Um, I, I love cooking, I've got four children, you know, I love, it. it's something I love to do. So just coming over and just having some fresh ingredients. Joe loves his food and, and you know, very sensory. He loves what he loves, mum's cooking. So again, you know, I've been able to cook him some dishes. Um, got the dishwasher, we got the washing machine, you know, we didn't bring much down with us, we just literally threw things in the bag. So all of that has been taken care of, I don't have to worry about any of, you know, oh my god, I haven't got clean stuff for Joe, he only likes certain things. I've just been able to bang them in the washing machine, you know, down to using comfort and everything's been here for us, um, all the utensils. It all means an awful lot, you know, having that cup of coffee when you want to make it in the middle of the night, just getting up and coming down, you know, and making a fresh brew. It, yeah, it all adds up to our well-being, our mental health. Opening that door, just getting outside in the fresh air, you would not know that you're next to a hospital. It just all really has, you know, a good feeling factor. And I think for the family back in Wales, them knowing you know they haven't been able to travel because of COVID just seeing me and seeing my surroundings on my Zoom to know that mum's safe to know that mum you know Russ has been able to cook mum a nice meal or mum's been cooking she must be feeling okay you know and for my aging parents as well who have very much been part of our lives just for them to you know for me to say mum I'm fine I'm safe you know Joe's safe this is really like home from home it's really, I'd, well, I don't really know what we'd have, well, we'd have had to carry on traveling, wouldn't we? We would be even more exhausted than, than we were. We were due to go home. Joe came over the weekend and we were due to go home back to Wales, um, but Joe's had bloods, potassium very high, very, very poorly, straight back on the ward. You know, we'd have been back on four again, that 120 miles, but it's like, phone call, you know, can we can we keep the flat on and you guys, that's what it's for, you know, it's there for you to help you on your journey. And I don't think people realise until they're in these situations, and very often it's a one-off for people, thankfully, because you don't want anybody to be poorly, but for people where it's a lifelong commitment, um, their health, like we said for Joe, for 17 years, it has really been a roller coaster for, for my children, for the four of them, you know, things can be stopped, holidays can be cancelled and it, it is your life, it is your memories and it, the older we're getting, we're older parents now and, and obviously Joe's had chronic health for this time, having these centres of excellence with, it's, it's almost like it's holistic therapy the coming over here um, and, and all the residential settings that are around for your caring for the families as well. I'm very much an advocate for Joseph with his learning disability and his autism. It's about his well-being, his overall, his medical, his physical, but it's about the whole well-being and I feel this is what 
you know, the flats, the cottages are all about, about that holistic approach, um, including the whole family. And hopefully that will have a nurturing effect, you know, for other families and that we can all, you know, come together, especially when COVID, hopefully, you know, we can all get together and share our stories. And I know you're going to have a hub of excellence next door, you know, where we can come for a cuppa and a cake and share our stories and support each other, really. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit of a snippet into the life of Hayley and Joseph and Russell and um, our family back in Wales. Um, you know, no words can say how this has really helped us just cope at one of the most traumatic times in our life. Um, you know, thankfully to the QE and thankfully to the Hospital Trust, you've kept us safe, you give us hope and um, hopefully you'll be here along our journey because it will be a journey. There's no quick fix as there is for a lot of families. Um, so thank you very, very much.